stubborn facts. Jeff? John Roberts reporting live from the White House. Let's take it to the judge now, Fox News senior judicial analyst, Judge Andrew Napolitano. Two separate things. First, Michael Cohen, what have we learned? We've learned that federal prosecutors here in New York City, not Bob Mueller and his team in Washington, D.C., career prosecutors here in New York City, have evidence that the president of the United States committed a felony by ordering and paying Michael Cohen to break the law. How do we know that? They told that to the federal judge. Under the rules, they can't tell that to a federal judge unless they actually have that hardcore evidence. Under the rules, they can't tell that to a federal judge unless they intend to do something with that evidence. The U.S. attorney in Manhattan, a Donald Trump appointee, taking a page from Jeff Sessions' book, recused himself, leaving this case in the hands of the full-time career professional prosecutors. They are the ones who prosecuted Michael Cohen. They are the ones who told the federal judge that Donald Trump orchestrated these unlawful payments. They are the ones who made the agreement with AMI, the parent company of the uh, National Enquirer, which ties a bow on all of this, which connects the dots between the payments to the two women who alleged to uh, uh, claim they had intimate relationships with the president. And the line running through all that is the president himself. Prosecutors have told us through these filings that the pr they have evidence that the president committed a felony. The felony is paying Michael Cohen to commit a felony. It's pretty basic. Somebody hires you, so A hires B to shoot someone. A is as liable as if he had pulled the trigger. You pay someone to commit a crime, they commit the crime, you are liable, criminally liable, for their commission of that crime as well as their being liable. That's what the prosecutors told the federal judge. They've not announced whether there was criminal intent on the president's part, which would be required for prosecution. Yes. Uh, we don't know what they know. It's interesting, Shep. They have announced that they have this evidence. They've announced the existence of the evidence. They haven't revealed the substance of it. Michael Cohen is not somebody the feds are going to put on the witness stand. So when he gives them this kind of evidence, they must corroborate it through other people or through documents or through wires or through emails or the way lawyers corroborate information that comes out of the mouth of someone. So we don't know if they have evidence of intent. But under the law, a person is presumed to intend the natural and probable consequences of their behavior. You pay your lawyer to commit a crime, you are presumed to intend for him to commit it. So you're saying that this evidence says the president has committed a felony? Yes. I'm, well, I'm saying that the prosecutors have said this to the federal judge. This was the most damning and novel information that came out last Friday, and it was all packaged today at Michael Cohen's uh, sentencing when at the end of it, the people who prosecuted him, Bob Kazumi, who was the number two person in that office, the career guy, uh, announced the settlement with, uh, with AMI. That, that's an old that, settlement. That is an old settlement, but we didn't know about it right. until today. That is the last piece uh, of the puzzle in all of this. The admission by AMI that the whole purpose for doing this was to influence the outcome of the election. That makes it a campaign expenditure, the failure to report which is a felony. What now? It's in the hands of, of two prosecutor's offices that don't always agree. Bob Mueller's office, the independent counsel in D.C., yeah. who thought that Michael Cohen should skate with no jail time or next to no jail time. Well, it's time. two different things. He correct, correct. And Bob Kazumi, the number two person in the federal prosecutor's office here in New York City, who's the one who has this evidence. The other interesting thing here that came out last Friday is the president's being investigated by prosecutors other than Bob Mueller? Yes. Who are they? The federal prosecutors here in New York City. What do they have? They have all the president's records because they raided Michael Cohen's the team that raided Michael Cohen's office uh, last April. If you're the president's lawyers right now, how are you taking this? You are taking it with, with great gravity. The president says he's been exonerated. I, I, that, I've got to believe he's saying that for political purposes. No rational person could construe this as, as an exoneration. It's the opposite. Unless of they're idea. escaping reality. He, he is in the crosshairs now of two prosecutors, federal prosecutor's office in his own Department of Justice. Bob Mueller in Washington, D.C., and the federal prosecutors in the Southern District of New York here in Manhattan. And we haven't even heard any Russia stuff.
Well, the Russia stuff did come out in some of the things that Michael Cohen said. The president denied that he had any communication with Russians during the campaign. Michael Cohen told the prosecutors here in New York, and they told the federal judge that, in fact, Michael Cohen and the president were negotiating, the president through Michael Cohen, with Vladimir Putin during uh, January to June of 2016. That's the Republican primary season, at the end of which he is the uh, presumptive nominee. Is that a crime, that negotiation? No, but it's profoundly contrary to the, public, to the president's public uh, representations, and it puts the president in, in the vicinity of communicating with a foreign power in order to obtain something of value, permission to build a hotel. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome, Shep. How would you like it if your co-